Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Amid turmoil over the falling oil price, the new Saldana Bay Industrial Development Zone is still intent on attracting oil and gas services sector investment. Terence Creamer joins me to talk about the prospects. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What is the rationale for setting up an oil and gas services hub at the port of Saldana Bay? Well, for many years we've been looking at this opportunity. Uh, as we've seen Africa becoming a real uh, growth market in terms of oil and gas exploration and production. Uh, more and more rigs are now uh, set up around African coastline, as well as there's always been the passing trade of uh, rigs that go for servicing in Asia, as well as in the Middle East, and they come past um, the Western Cape, the West Coast. And there's something like um, 100 rigs or so now in African waters drilling or exploring and there's about 120 of these rigs that get towed past uh, the west coast and around South Africa to, to get serviced. So uh, for many years there's been talk about trying to uh, have those serviced um, and repaired more and more in South Africa and there has been rig repair happening uh, in different places. Cape Town does some rig repair and other elsewhere. But the idea of the, uh, of the industrial development zone that's been set up next to this uh, deep water port at Saldana Bay is to be a, a real one-stop shop for, uh, the, uh, for the oil industry and the gas industry um, of Africa and that passing trade. And to really, at the moment, uh, as the, as the, the Trans Transnet uh, National Ports Authority suggests, it's really a last resort option because we don't really have the facilities in place. Um, but if you know if a rig is really in dire straits, it does come into South Africa or into Saldana Bay, but to really set up the infrastructure to do this. Um, so Saldana is seen as a, as a very uh, ideal location for this because it's a close, especially to the west, and west coast of Africa activity. And then it's got, um, it's, a, it's a massive area. It's a big, big port. Apparently all South Africa's ports can fit inside uh, that one port. And it's also naturally deep. Um, it's got a, you can have ships and oil rigs with drafts of uh, more than 20 meters, which is a deep water port. So, and that's not that's without dredging. So, so really, this this idea or aspiration has been around for a while. Then we've uh, there's been active work from the provincial, the national government, DTR, to try and get this IDZ going. And that's really the the rationale. You know, this there's this growing market. There's this opportunity with uh, uh, an underutilized port, and it's really natural. Uh, it's a natural uh, place for these rigs to come and dock and get repaired. What impact is the dramatic fall in the oil price having on this rationale? Well, I think it's the timing is very bad because I think we've just got our the framework in place. This IDZ was uh, uh, designated specifically. It's the first uh, IDZ to be dis designated with a specific focus, and that's the really the oil and gas services industry. Um, and we, I don't think many were envisaging the oil price falling by close to 60%, well over 50% from its peaks of last year. And uh, I think that is going to affect the appetite of the services sector to come and invest. So it, it is going to have an impact, I think, um, on, on the aspirations and the timing, possibly, of how big we can make uh, Saldana Bay and how much interest we can attract from investors that are going to be actually setting up either the infrastructure or the, the uh, terminals that will uh, have the capacity to do the servicing. But the argument from both the IDZ side as well as the South African Oil and Gas Alliance, which is more of an industry body, is that this is really, uh, you know, these are si there are cycles in the oil industry. We're going through quite a dramatic one at the moment and a traumatic one for many. And it is probably going to have, uh, it could have an influence on the way the, 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 the whole concept of the IDZ is perceived in the short term. But there are many people that are looking beyond the cycles and through the cycles. And also, you know, because there are so many rigs in production, there's always going to, there's, there's a ready, a ready day made market because some of these have to start being repaired at, uh, at certain intervals. So, and also when you have, one of the ideas is to be able to serve those ships that go to and from, the vessels that go to and from and do services to the rigs. So with waste services and with food services and things like that. So it's going to be a one-stop shop. And that is uh, that, that won't necessarily go away unless all the rigs become dormant, which is unlikely. So they're saying that a lot of these investors look through these cycles. They're looking more long-term. 
and they're hoping that it's not going to affect dramatically the appetite for investment. What practical steps are being taken to establish the services hub? Well, there's, there are three projects that are being uh, developed at the uh, port of S uh, Saldana Bay, and two of them are, are really quite large, and it's going to involve, between the two of them, something like 10 uh, billion rands worth of um, uh, investment. Now, the Transport National Ports Authority has indicated that while they had always intended to, to look at this as an opportunity, it wasn't really part of their current cycle of investment. You know, as Transnet's got this 300 billion rand plus seven year rolling investment plan, and uh, this was not really catered for within that investment plan. So although Sildana will be having uh, money being sunk into it by Transnet National Ports Authority, and uh, other others that operate around that port, they don't. the 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 big 10 billion rand, which uh, re a lot of it relates to what they call marine side infrastructure, getting the terminal in place, and then there'll be also uh, what they call land side infrastructure, which would be the the cranes and the warehouses and the offices that go uh, that enable the um, service provider to do the work on the rigs. Uh, that you know they want the private sector to do that investment. So we're going to, they're currently finalizing two requests for proposals for uh, these projects. And uh, these are going to be released soon and they, they, they're working backwards from an Operation Pakisa timeline. Now Operation Pakisa is looking at, a, it's, it means this Operation Hurry Up. So they're looking at high impact projects in the South African economy. And one of them is this oceans economy and a subcomponent of the oceans economy is this oil and gas services sector. And really that's calling for this infrastructure to be accelerated so that beginning of 2018 it's in place. And so th that's going to mean that they need to get the tenders out very soon. They need to have preferred bidders in place uh, be by around September this year, which is a fairly quick turnaround time. And they need to see construction happening quite soon thereafter to meet those timelines. Now whether, whether there's going to be appetite for uh, these tenders is, is uh, an open question. It's a lot of money. Um, and, um, you know, we, I think we have to see the details. It's, it's going to be a build, operate, and transfer type arrangement. And we're going to have to see how attractive this is to the, uh, the sort of companies that might want to invest in this uh, services hub. So I think it's good. there's going to be a lot of attention paid to this. There's going to be a lot of interest because this is really... Uh, you know, the start of what uh, Transnet's been promising for many years, that the private sector terminal operators are going to be more and more um, able to enter the ports and there's going to be fewer and fewer impediments to them doing that. And here's an opportunity to put out a tender to get responses and to hopefully get uh, bidders that are able, capable of investing this capital, th uh, building the infrastructure and servicing this industry. But I think it's, a, it's an issue that we're going to have to see what the oil price impact is on this, whether people are prepared to look through the cycle and see the opportunity in Africa beyond that. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.